March the 3rd, February 2003, Creed 3 finally hit the theaters. Guys, I am Neil Legend. This is Smash Movies and More Review, and we are about to bring you the review of Creed 3. I'm telling you ahead of time, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you do not want to hear the spoilers, click away from this video. Everybody else, let's tune in. Guys, this movie is amazing. I'm just going to go in and throw that out at the very front. But I do want to say I have a lot that I want to speak about. So I'm going to make future videos. I'm going to make another video about how I personally feel about the storyline, about a lot of intangibles that happen in this movie. And then I'm also going to make another video about each one perspective, about Adonis perspective and about Anderson's perspectives because you have to dive deep into these characters in order to to get a feel you cannot just go into this movie just watching this movie like I'm here to watch a good movie if you if you're watching a movie you're not getting all that this movie has to offer. You need to get invested into the character's personal life, into what they are feeling. And, and, and I believe, I believe if you do that, this movie will be one of your favorite movies in this entire year. So this movie is directed by Michael B. Jordan. He also is the lead role and the writers is Keenan Coogler. Zach Balin, I believe I said his name right, and Ryan Coogler. Man, let me tell you something. They did a good job. And, and, and I'm going to go ahead and speak about this. I have my biases just because Sly was not inside this movie. I got into boxing in my personal life because of Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5. And I believe it's just called Rocky, which is the sixth installment. I got into boxing because of that. I cry because of them training montages that they have in the movie. And just, I was looking at the, 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 the 45th anniversary magazine and just start crying because I, I am attached to it emotionally. And because of litigation behind the scenes, he's not in this movie. Uh, I, I do feel a little slighted. But that would not take away from my review and I'm telling you, man, this movie is is is, is awesome. So, so it really, you have Michael B. Jordan that's playing Adonis. He reprising his role as as Adonis, um, but he's retired, and 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 he's basically a done king now, 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 not the done king, the cutthroat. But he'll put himself into a promoter role. You have Anderson, which is his longtime friend. I think they call him. Um, Diamond, Diamond Dime Anderson is, is, is his name, um, played by Jonathan Majors. So when they was younger, they, they got into some street beef. And actually, it wasn't even really street beef. They saw the guy, I think his name was Lonnie. They saw him. This is the guy that was when they was in a group home. Lonnie used to beat they tail mercilessly. And I mean with fists and stuff. And now he's older. And he saw Lonnie walking. And he said, yo, yo, remember me? Remember me? And then, boom, just stole off on him. And I'm talking about Adonis did that. And he whooping his tail. So now Lonnie friends, they come over and they pull Adonis off of him. And then they start whooping his tail. So Anderson, he comes up with a gun. I don't believe he pulled a gun. But at the time he pulled a gun, the cops came up and Adonis took off. 18 years later, Anderson get out. You know who I'm talking about? Diamond dime anderson he gets out and just to be honest he wants what is his he wants what he believes is his he is mad he is angry and if you go to the eating scene of the movie when he took him out look like waffle house to me is what it looked like you can feel the tension you can feel the tension the first time they they, they meet and, and and it's like it's two friends that has a lot that they want to say, but they keeping it kosher. They, 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 they keeping the temperature on top of the stove. They're not going inside the stove, but you can 
feel the tension like it's it's a lot of stuff that want to be said it's it's a lot of stuff that need to be said but but it's just a lot of sarcastic statements especially coming from anderson's side it's a lot of statements coming from him that that you can just tell if you was in that role you would be saying the exact same stuff and this dude mine i did 18 years because of you now you're the champion you have my life you have my career and i'm pretty sure that's exactly what he's feeling but he tell him he want to be champion. I, I, I'm going to be champion. And, and I need you to make that happen. Any way possible, I need you to make that happen. And my man was like, Mina Adonis, he said, I can't do that. I can't do that. So Anderson make it happen the wrong way. Meaning they was at this gathering, this music listening gathering of Adonis' wife, um, Bianca, played by Tessa Thompson. And the champ that's supposed to fight is there. His name is... Felix played by Jose and then you have Drago from the last movie he's there he's supposed to be fighting the champ out of nowhere this guy breaks his hand get into a skull for break his hand now he's out of commission so now being the promoter that that Adonis steals he's like you know what what I'm going to do is, is is make this an uh, underdog story versus a chill. Just like how they did in Rocky 1 and Rocky 2. So I, I do want to say, even though that slide is not in this movie, there's still a lot of intangibles that's from the Rocky franchise that is played out in this movie. But they do that underdog story, and now Jonathan Major's character, Anderson, is in the ring, and he playing all of this. He playing all of this. If you want to know how you plan this, I need you to hit that like button, that subscribe button. I need you to do that. I'm going to tell you that later on in, 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 in this review. He playing all that. He going in. He whoop dude's tail. And, and then we realize that he playing all this. And what I mean we realize all the cast members and stuff and everything, it's a lot of tension because Phyllis just lost. And Tony, who was played by Wood Harris, he told him this. So he telling Creed, he said, yo, stay away from the gym for a long time. I told you this. This dude is is is, is bad business, right? He's bad business. Right after that, Creed mother called him. And we all know who his mother is, the beautiful Felicia Rashad. Woo, she called her. Her name is Mary, Mary Creed in the movie. And she said, you know what? I want to give you these papers. And he's like, yo, who, 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 what are these papers? These was actually letters written to him by Anderson when he was locked up. His moms never gave him the letters. His moms never gave him the letters. And he was like, why, you did, well, why did you do this? And she was like, I was trying to protect you. And he was like, you got him feeling like I abandoned him. That's why he mad. That's why he doing this. He wasn't bad. He protected me is what he was telling his mom and she was like yeah i i i know son I, i'm sorry and he was like this is your fault all of this is your fault and she said i know it is i know it's all my fault and she said yes he was protecting you then but he's ain't protecting you now and so she slid him a picture of when he was locked up and one of his friends in there that was locked up the same friend that was at the party that that broke drago's hand so all this was a setup from beginning. And I'm going to tell you my personal feelings that 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 Jonathan Majors, his character, this was a plan from beginning when he came into his life. He had this plan already set up. See, 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 y'all think these are friends and we need to hash it out. We're going to work it out. No, this dude just served 18 years fed time. He just served that. So he was playing chess in there the whole time. And I don't mean actual chess, which I'm pretty sure he was, but he was playing chess like in his mind. So he came out with a strategic plan already set in place from the first day he met him. That's how deep it runs. And he already knew dude was going to feel a little bit remorseful because Creed never came and saw him, never written him back. And the thing that that Adonis gave him, that was his father's, and one of the letters, he sent it back. So that let me know that there was a point in time that he was still writing him. He said, you know, he ain't going to write him back. He ain't my homie no more. So I got to send this back to him to let him know that that, that, that that relationship is gone. We severed that tie. Fast forward, because I don't want to hold you guys. Fast forward, we get to the 
we get to the to the fight, Adonis versus Anderson. And let me tell you, I thought how they was gonna top Rocking one, two, three, four, five, six, Creed one and two. And they did something I was not ready for. They're fighting. First round go. Then they go into the second round. And then, man, this was so powerful because you see Adonis looking at looking at Anderson and Anderson looking at Adonis. And they, they look at each other as when they was a child. And then you see everybody from the crowd just leave and just go. And you just, there's nobody there. It's just them. And it's just an empty space, just them in the, in the ring. You, you, if you know anything was happening, you know this is tunnel vision. They don't care about what their corner is saying. They don't care about the crowd. They don't care about this. It's just them two. And now we got to handle this like men. We got to step back up in this ring so they step up. I'm trying to tell you, man, this was a great round, quote, unquote. I'm saying that on purpose, a great round. And it was just like the special effects was great. Creed got hit one time, and then jail bars came up. Now he's back up against jail bar, and it's just like, yo, I have never seen this in a – in a realistic boxing movie. Even though that this would never happen. What's happening. I understand the mental and the and the emotions. Yeah what we're looking at. From the, from, from, from the outside looking in. We're looking at this and like. We don't see that. But these are childhood friends. With a lot of emotions in between them. He done invited this man to his house. He done met his daughter and his wife. And he played him from day one. And then Creed feeling like you in prison because of me. I let you down. I didn't come check on you. So all these emotions is running, repping in this ring. And then when they come to, when that round is over, and now the people back into the crowds, you can hear the announcements, people in the corner. They did that from round two to round 10. Now I believe it's 10, it might have been 11. But all what I'm trying to say is most of the rounds was played in that suspenseful mindset of feelings, of emotions. Here's the only thing that I, I really didn't like about the movie in general. And it's not about this movie. It's about all movies. This movie had plot armor. To where I kind of already knew Adonis was going to win. That's the only thing that spoiled it for me. Because me being a young African American. Growing up impoverished. Growing up with a friend like that. Multiple friends like that. Knowing that boxing is a passion of mine. And seeing this played out. On the bitch strings. I really want to see. What's going to happen. In real life. If they both fought to the death. That in this moment. Which why. Everybody thought that. Anderson was going to fight dirty. Because. When he went against Felix. He beat his tail. But he fought dirty. But a lot of people was like, why he didn't fight dirty against him? No, he had to beat this man the clean way to show you when I beat you, it was me. I ain't have to do no, 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 no tricks. I ain't have to knee you. I ain't have to do illegal blows or anything or head butt you. I, I ain't have to do all that. I didn't have to elbow you in the face. No, we're going to we're going to fight this one on one man against man. Imano, Imano. And made the best man win. He fought him like that on purpose. Because if he would have resulted to some underhand. Because if he would have retreated to some underhanded tactics. He would have been like, you know what? I didn't really beat him. But I, I, I have to beat you with these and with this mind. That's what made this fight an epic fight. 
but the ending was taken away because of plot armor. Minutes is rolling, people in the background cut. All right, we got to we got to get this angle. At the end of the day, this movie is is not real. It's real to us who's watching who lived that life, but but that's the only that's the only thing. And, and, and I got to get over that plot armor stuff. But after that, after Creed beat him. The old rock and music come in. That's where Sylvester Stallone is supposed to be right there. He's supposed to be there with that music playing. He's supposed to be by his side, but he wasn't, and we and we know the reasons why. After all this, he go into Anderson's locker room, and he sit down right beside him and talk. Now, let me say this, guys. During that last round. I said the best way this movie can end is once Adonis win, he look over there and know that this is still his dude. He look at as a brother, as somebody he love, and he go over there and they just hug it out. I, that's what I wanted to see. That didn't happen. They both looked at each other and then they turned around like, God dang, come on. But then Adonis went to his locker room. My man was sitting there and they sat down and they. this is the first time they really talked. Now, how significant is this? And I'm sorry a lot of people may not understand this. But when men have a problem, we're not hearing one another until we put on the gloves and knock somebody freaking head off. That's how we operate. I'm, I'm sorry. Talking it out. It, there's no talking it out. I don't care if you're right. I'm wrong. I, it, there's no talking it out. I, I, I need to fight. So all that, there was no talking in the world that could have happened that was going to stop them from landing on the line in the middle of the ring. There was no talking. They, in order for them to talk, they would have to fight first. And that's what happened. Tell you, I got a best friend like that. We ain't talked since high school, but I got a best friend like that. We was friends already. But then we got into a fight, a one-on-one fight on the school bus. After that, we became better friends. I'm going to be honest. We don't live in, in, in that generation no more. Somebody get in a fight and they lose when they go back and get their homies, come back and jump down. Then they get jumped. They want to go get a gun and go shoot these. Like, that's the crazy world we live in right now. But 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 when, when you are two men, you fight it out. After you fight it out, the best man has won. And now all that animosity, all that hate. Whew, I'm, I'm, I'm y'all just don't know how I'm feeling right now. All that animosity, that all, all, all that hate, all that tension, it kind of fades away a little bit. And now you're able to talk with a calm mind, and that's what happened. Have you noticed? Did you notice? Rather, it really was no apologies until after the fight between them two. Adonis was like, "Yo, I'm sorry." I didn't come check up on you. And my man said, you know, it's not your fault. He said, he started off, I said, we just kids, man. It's not on you. And he, and, and the thing is, you can say something one time. <clears throat> Sorry about that. But when you say something two times and three times, it's not on you. Look, it's not on you. Dude meant that. And Adonis felt that. And then Adonis said, it ain't on you too. That was the realest they was with one another ever since they was a child. And I felt that. And then at the end, he said, yo, if you ever need anything, you know where to find me. That's some real brotherhood stuff right there. I just gave y'all the whole plot. I would love you to go out and watch this movie. Everything else was was on point. There was no scene that was drawn out too far. When you come to backstory, they did it justice. The backstories of we already know Adonis' backstory, but we're looking at him at a different light. He got all the money, got the wife, he got the child now. You know, she's deaf. That was foreshadowed in the last movie. So so in the last Creed, um, Creed 2. So now you know the whole family doing the sign language stuff. So they're doing that. But now we're seeing him with all the money and stuff, but yet and still they put the family aspect into the movie, which let us see that this is really why he do it, why he fight, he fight for them. He don't fight for the money. No, no, he fight for them. With all this money, he's still being a great father, a great husband. You, you can see it. Oh, man, and then 
Anderson, his backstory from beginning to end and how he come out. Like, like you cannot be mad at this guy. This guy is not a villain. People will look at you as a villain. But when you understand why he's doing what he's doing and what he went through, you understand why he is the way he is. One of the saddest things in it, Felicia Rashad, you know, her, her character, Mary Creed, she ended up dying. She died in the bed. It kind of hurt for me just because I follow her work. You know, but I saw it coming just because... I can tell this movie took a different direction from the regular Rocky franchise. It really did. It still had tangibles and a little feeling of the Rocky franchise, the the the, the new Creed trilogy, but yet and still it took a different direction. It's going to be a lot of young people. It's going to be a lot of young stories. This is a Rocky slash Creed movie that is made for 2023. This ain't, you know, when when they came out with Creed 1, Creed 2, it still felt like the old times. I'm going to just be honest. But this movie felt like it's, it's for this time period. And this is the different direction that I believe that they, they wanted to go. This is that different direction. And they did it well. They did splendid. I don't know when the last time I ever used the word splendid, but I did it right there. So this movie was good. The clothes was good, of course. I'm going to be honest. I came around to the soundtrack. But I had to because all the music, I, I, I kind of knew, especially at the beginning. They were playing the watchers at the beginning. And then faintly in the background, I think it was a song by the gang when they was walking up into the boxing club. And so then after that, it was a Snoop Dogg song. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I forgot. This West Coast. And L.A., this is where it said at when it was young. But yet and still, I did want some music that was more for the moment. I wanted music that, like, you walk into the, the, the boxing ring, that it represented who you are. I'm not saying that music didn't represent who they were or who they are. But what I'm saying, like, when, when Drago came out in, 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 in Rocky IV, oh, it sent chills through my body. And it was just like, oh man, like this goes with him. I could, I could close my eyes and see that was him. And he stood at the end of the realm and that shadow was going up against the wall. Oh man, it was crazy. I didn't get that feeling with the music when they was walking out. I didn't, not at all. I just thought it was good music for the time. That was probably the only knock that I have for the movie. But I done went a little too long-winded for this movie. 25 minutes is in right now. Guys, I, I, I want to I I I be careful with what I'm about to say. I think this movie is better than Creed 2 and 3. Yes, I said it. I said it again. And I know it's going to be controversial for a lot of you guys. This movie is better than Creed 2 and 3. And I'm going to be honest, this is probably going to shut some of you up. The reason why is because this movie, I can relate to it a whole lot more than I can relate to the other two movies. And that relatability factor played a huge part into the movie, which I will explain in my next video about just my, my personal feelings and stuff and, 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 and why, why this video is 25 minutes long. Cause I, cause if you know me, I normally do between six or ten minutes. But this, but this movie, I was, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'm gonna be honest. At the end of this movie, I shed a tear. It, it, it wasn't because it was a good movie; it was just because I related to it. I related to it. So I rate this movie a nine out of ten. I want to say a 10 out of 10, but I still feel kind of slighted that Sly was not in this movie. So I can't give it a 9. I have to give it a 10. But they did this movie justice. I have no major critiques of this movie from beginning to end. It was it was impactful. Every scene was needed. There were, it was no wasted movie. In Excuse me about that. It was no wasted time, wasted movement in this movie. None of that. 
And I appreciate every aspect of this movie to his wife, to his daughter, to his mother, to his best friend, to his gym mates, to everybody, to Stephen A. Smith. That little that that, that little cameo was needed. All of that was needed. I know a lot of people said that they wanted to see a lot of more build up trash talk from Anderson to to create. Now I don't think that was needed. I I, I think it was self explanatory. We ain't need no trash talk. We ain't need no build up. The storyline of the movie gave us that trash talk. I I can already know in my heart what he's going through without what he's saying. I know in my heart what he's going through without him saying anything. So I get this movie a nine out of 10 before I go on for another 20 minutes, guys, I appreciate you for rocking out with smash movies and more review. Um, you hit, make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button, or make sure you leave a comment. I will in the next couple of days, drop the other movie about my personal feelings and how it impacted me. And, and just the other video of, of both their perspective and, and why this is a good movie. Guys, I appreciate you so much. See you on the next video.